I uh, said before the break, before Christmas, New Year's, and I'll continue to say it, that nearly all of the consensus science will be proven wrong eventually. And I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. And you don't have to be a scientist to know that. You just have to look at the history of consensus science. And that will tell you that that's going to be the case for this as well. It's always been the case and it always will be. One example of something that will be proven wrong, I believe, is uh, asymptomatic spread. Asymptomatic spread. This is the idea that seemingly healthy people can have COVID and spread it and be super spreaders and not even know it. Therefore, everyone needs to be locked down. This is why we're quarantining the healthy. This is why we're quarantining people who maybe might have been near someone who might have <laughs> had COVID at the time, right? Just got to shut everything down, lock everyone down because of this all-powerful asymptomatic spread. You're not even showing symptoms, but you're still spreading it. Back in, I'm going to, this will one day be proven to not be a thing. If, well, it's already, I would argue, proven not to be a thing, but one day, eventually, the consensus will come around. Uh, back in June, the head of the WHO's Emerging Diseases Unit gave a press conference and said asymptomatic spread is very rare. She said, from the data we have, it still seems to be rare that an, air, that an asymptomatic person actually transmits to a secondary individual. And she added, for emphasis, it's very rare. Now you're saying, Slater, I don't believe that. I've never heard that. What are you talking about? Are you making that up? Here's the video. It still appears to be rare that an asymptomatic individual actually transmits onward. What we really want to be focused on are, is following the symptomatic cases. If we followed all of the symptomatic cases, because we know that this is a respiratory pathogen, it passes from an individual through infectious droplets. If we actually followed all of the symptomatic cases, isolated those cases, followed the contacts and quarantined those contacts, we would drastically reduce. I would love to be able to give a proportion of how much transmission we would actually stop but it would be a drastic reduction in transmission. If we could focus on that, I think we would, we would do very, very well in terms of suppressing transmission. But from the data we have, it still seems to be rare that an asymptomatic person actually transmits onward to a secondary individual. So it's no different than any other virus. In, the, in that regard, when you're showing symptoms, you're producing the virus and then you're shedding the virus. So if you're showing symptoms, stay home. It's just like anything else. If you're not showing symptoms, go on with your life. Now, let me put this disclaimer here. Is it possible for there to be some asymptomatic spread? Is that a possibility? Sure, maybe, right? And that's why good scientists are careful to never say never about anything, right? And instead, they emphasize multiple times like that woman did, it's very rare. It's, we don't have any evidence. I'm not gonna say never. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's very, very rare, okay? So I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist. You understand like, the disclaimer there. But by no means does it justify shutting everything down forever, which is what we're still doing a year later. Now, of course, the WHO walked that back and, um, Oh, no, we don't, we're not sure. We're not sure if there's asymptomatic spread. Well, now we are, right? As sure as one could be. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.